Hi everyone, I'm Annie, a wife and mother from a wife and mother .blogspot.com. Welcome back to another planner related video. First off, thank you all um, who follow me on Instagram at a wife and mother and also on Facebook as Annie, a wife and mother, for just your well wishes and wishing me <laughs> good health. Um, if you're new to my channel, I am. I have been sick five times since Christmas with colds. I think I got the flu that had been going around and all of that. And um, I just share that with my subscribers and my followers uh, to let you know. That's why I've pulled back. And instead of doing uh, two videos per week, I have cut it down to about one video per week, at least for the rest of the month of March, just to, to make sure I'm not overtaxing myself. And, and then I make sure I gain my health back. Um, and of course, as a wife and mother, my family should be my first priority. So if I'm sick and trying to do too much, then of course my family um, suffers for that. So thank you for understanding. I do hope in April to be back up to two videos a week. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, then uh, it will take the guesswork out of whether or not I've done another video. And you can choose to be notified um, by subscribing. Uh, you can see here my lovely handmade watercolor stickers. Uh, so many of you kindly requested a video about this, either from following my Instagram or on Facebook. I am happy, so happy to do that. So I'm going to dive right in and just kind of describe how I actually made these stickers. Um, the hilarity, <laughs> the side note, is that I cannot find my container of blank stickers in this size. I can only find my stickers here that are more like an address label. Um, so as you can see, they're much bigger. So um, I, the system will be the exact same. These are just removable stickers. They might be the Avery label. They might be an off-brand. I don't have the box in front of me. I can't recall. Um, this is the box that I have for these labels. So as you can see, you'll want to find ones that say removable. Um, this means that you should be able to peel them on and off of your page. You will lose um, the integrity of the sticker after a while, but at least, oops, I'm sorry, I bumped the table. But at least you will get um, several uses out of one sticker if you so choose. And before I kind of get my workspace here all painty and messy, I just wanted to pull over my Color Crush planner in light pink and just show you um, how I'm starting to kind of use these in my planner. This is the, only the second week that I have used either stamps or stickers that I have made. So I'm still, I'm not in a consistent color theme. Um, I did have the foresight to, you know, make my classes at the local YMCA that I teach um, in the same color. Um, I had thought perhaps I would do two videos this week that did not happen which this is why it's kind of nice that these are removable because you can just kind of peel this off and I could reuse this sticker maybe next week or in April for instance you know so I could come down here several weeks later and just put it on and then I can also adjust this sticker when I go to decorate and actually fill in this week so that's one nice thing um, but as you can see you know I've I've got some trial and error my pages aren't perfect and that's one thing about stamps. Um, you'll either want to practice a lot on pages outside of your planner, or you'll need to kind of give yourself grace to figure out whether you want all of your stamps in the same color, where exactly you want your stamps that will not only be functional but pleasing to your own eye. Um, just don't try to copy somebody else's system because you like it. Um, copy it because you think it will be functional for you. And like I said, just a lot of trial and error. Um, use maybe a lot of just computer paper. You can see I've got a sheet right here. And practice, practice, practice. And also another thing, um, my beautiful inserts here are the week on two pages from Webster's Pages. And it did come with my planner. Um, I'm afraid I don't have any information about where you can order either the planners. Um, as far as I know, you can't get the inserts by themselves. You must, in fact, order one of their planners. So I'm afraid I won't be able to help you kind of pinpoint one. But search out Color Crush planners online. Um, check Instagram. Check uh, Facebook. There's so many groups and people just have that information already. You know, just something I don't have time to <laughs> get all of that information. Um, so back to kind of practicing just a tip to figure out what kinds of inks really will work and not bleed in your planner. 
might really just depend on you doing a lot of trial and error. So if you have a piece of note paper in the same thickness as your other insert, go ahead and practice your stamping on that and then you can flip it to the back and see realistically what the bleed through looks like. Um, so as much as you can, practice on your own inserts if you're going to stamp directly. The nice thing about making stickers like this of your own is that there's no bleed through. Um, because it is a sticker, because it is thick, once you stamp on here, you know, you have no worry about bleed through and you can move these around and fit them in wherever you want. And of course you can choose to leave the background blank. So maybe if you have white inserts and a white sticker, you won't necessarily see the sticker and it will look simply as if you stamped on your page but with the flexibility to move it around. So there's a lot of um, variety and options that you can do just by using stamps and stickers. So these were the first two that I ever did. As you can see, they're not perfect. Um, you know, I absolutely detest how this turned out, just for me personally, but this might be a style that you like. I will show you that. Um, my stamping was not that great, um, but you know what, I can still use these, and as long as I'm you know, not distracted by the poor quality, that's all that matters. Um, so feel free to discard ones that you don't like or just feel free to use them and nobody is judging your planner. That's the nice thing. So these are the stamps that I use. I briefly talked about them in my last video. Whoops, I think that's upside down. These are from V's Sweet Ideas. Let me pull up her. business card here. So V is Sweet Ideas. You can find her online. I found her on Instagram and she has some great products, um, stamping, inks, things like that. And she'll probably be able to answer a lot of your questions about maybe what inks are good for planners and things like that. Um, so these are the stamps that I will be using to show you. Um, I did recently pick up these ink pads, um, they are specifically the chalk ink because I had heard from My Purpley Life that the chalk ink versus the magic ones, you're pretty much guaranteed they're not going to bleed through your page. But again, you need to try it on your own page before taking the word of somebody else um, just because your style um, or your particular pages might be slightly different. Um, so again, just practice, practice and make sure that it will work. And actually, as far as watercolors, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this with so many amazing um, artists and crafters online, but this is your simple Crayola. You get it out of the school supply section for a dollar or less during school season. And these are the watercolors I used. So hopefully that's actually encouraging to some of you. You might be able to raid some of your kids' art supplies instead of having to go and actually buy a nice artistic watercolor set. And then I just found a 12 pack of these kinds of brushes for like $2.99. And it was probably at Walmart. It might've been at my local Meyer. I'm sure you can find it at Target. I just wanted the different size bristles. And like I said, this came as a 12 pack. Here's one of my thick ones, it's off side here. So there's a th there were tons of thick ones as well. And I just thought this would be great, even if they're poor quality. Um, it was better than using the one in the one size that came with my Crayola <laughs> watercolor set. So these are the supplies that I use. Um, again, these are just removable stickers. You can find them in the office supply section of your local store. Um, you can find circle ones, which is actually what I was looking for, just really small circles. Um, I didn't find those, so I found about the same size, these little rectangles, and um, these larger ones are actually going to be helpful as I'm showing you the tutorial. There's more to see. So I have gone ahead and I just added a drop of water to all of these colors so that way they would start becoming um, good for wetting and mixing. I just have my little jar of water over here off to the side. I'm on top of a piece of paper so I can kind of practice and also just to kind of keep the mess down. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of do a pink shade first. Pink is, is my favorite color. Um, I go ahead and I start by just mixing and putting some of the red into um, the lid. So again, I am not spending money on any extra supplies. This is really something you can do with anything you have at home. You could even use the brush from the uh, Crayola watercolor kit 
And I'm just adding a lot more water because I want this to be a pink and I want it to be light water color. I don't want it to be red. So I've got a lot of water in there. I've got a very wet brush. I'm gonna keep mixing it. And I'm just gonna see, you know, what shade where I'm at. And that's actually a pretty good color. It's a little bit dark, but it might dry more pink. Um, I'm sorry that the camera image is not exactly true to what it's looking like in real life. And then this is all I did, is I got my brush wet and I did brush strokes. Now, this is where an actual artist um, might be able to give you better tips and technique. You know, if you do your brush this way, it will give you this effect and so on. Um, I just trial and error. I have no artistic background. Um, and I just, I mean, you can already see that in some places it's darker by doing my brush kind of weird. You're just seeing all sorts of brush strokes and colors. When I run out, I get some more. I'm not trying to make it all one solid, the same darkness color. And I think that's what gives it the kind of variant or, you know, what is it, ombre kind of look when I'm done, even though I'm not officially trying to achieve that. So right there, I'm already done with one and it just has a handmade look. And if I go ahead and I do the same color on my next one, you know, I could start here and vary my brush strokes, you know, and then maybe I'll go this way. And this was just how I achieved a very unique look on each of my stickers. You know, do as much as you have time for. Um, it's real simple to just go ahead and coat it. You could do a much more even stroke and get your color much more equal. You can kind of see it here on my green ones. You can see it clearly in the purple, how it's variant. It's not the same tone all the way or shade, you know, darkness all the way. Here, these look much more solid. I think it's because when I got to these ones, I did actually use this thicker brush, which is almost as wide as the actual stamp. So I had less, less brush strokes, filled it more quickly, and it just gave me a different look. So you can do whatever, whatever seems pleasing to you. And I don't know if I can even get this close enough for you to see or not, but you can kind of see little pores maybe on some of these. And one thing I noticed is that depending on how wet my brush was and the types of strokes I used, Sometimes it would be a little porous and it almost looks like dotted perhaps or speckled, maybe like a speckled robin's egg. And I don't mind that. I kind of like the effect. Again, it just makes each sticker unique. Um, so be aware of that. And again, just experiment with your labels, your paints, your brushes, and even just your hand, your stroke is going to be different than mine. So be aware of that and just kind of try to take those mental notes like, oh, I used more water on my brush and this is what happened. Or I used less water on my brush and this is what happened. Um, so that's how I achieved basically all of my stickers. Um, you can, you know, make any sort of color. When I did more of a red color, I just added more red. And because I didn't want it to be kind of clown red, I also used just a teeny bit of brown, and that's how I achieved more of a brick type color on my red ones. Let me see, kind of. So you can see it's a little bit deeper, more towards the red. You could honestly probably use a little more brown, and then it will look more red. See, like that. So then you can do, you know, this. And then you could immediately kind of follow it in, perhaps with a different color. Maybe you want some blue. And of course, you know, know your basic colors. If it's wet and you've got blue and red going on, then you might get some purple. If you wait until your red dries, you probably will have less. I'm, I'm truly no expert as far as watercolors. So you could kind of come in, you know, around. just like that. And then once it's had time to dry just for a second, you could start with a wet brush. And I know you could kind of go over the whole thing and try to blend it a little bit more. So I don't know, whatever floats your boat as far as colors, you know, going dot, 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 like this with different colors, the possibilities are endless. And that's what I love about planners and this whole washi tape stamping sticker thing 
is you can really just make it your taste. Obviously, I'm making very pastel -y colors. That is my preference. I'm sure you could either get different paints or use the different quantities of you know paint versus water and get very deep, rich primary colors um, or bold colors. So it, it is certainly something that um, could change up. Now, this is almost dry enough. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how I do my stamping on top, which is super simple. Um, but just so you can get an idea. And that's how I create my stickers. So with these, these are the clear ones where you need a stamp block to be able to press them down. You just pick whichever sticker you would like. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my lunch sticker. <clears throat> Actually, I have a better idea. I'm gonna use my um, shopping list one because I had sort of an aha moment. I'm sorry if this is a repeat for you guys and you're already this smart. <laughs> but I saw on somebody's Instagram feed um, last week that instead of, because it was the same stamp set, instead of using the whole word shopping list, they merely inked like shopping and then you could use it as more of an action sticker. So instead of stamping this at the top of the page and adding and jotting down your grocery list or shopping list, they um, used it to be able to make a sticker or a stamp more like this where it just said shopping and it was more of a to-do or action appointment type item. So I'll just show you that. Like I said, it was an aha moment for me and I was like, wow, why did I never think to only mark, you know, only ink half of the word and be able to basically get two stamps out of one. I could have a shopping list, and then of course I could also just have shopping. So I always try it on my paper first, another reason why I have paper underneath. And My Purpley Life, I watched her video on using these types of stamps. She talks about more ink and shows an example of more ink and have even pressure and all of that. So I won't say things that she's already said so much better and had more experience on. So check out My Purpley Life's YouTube videos um, and she can give you some great pointers as far as stamping. You can see that I caught just a little bit of the L while I was inking for my shopping. I'm gonna try again and see if I did any better. Otherwise, I had a pretty good stamping technique and also ink. That one looked much better. So once you kind of get comfortable with the stamp, you can go ahead and just put it on your sticker. Um, with these smaller ones, obviously I only have so much room. I decided to put my little fork and knife, which I stamped very badly on this and would like to improve much more. Um, just to signify that this was menu or uh, grocery shopping, you could leave shopping by itself. You could, you know, putting it in the center. Um, you could write underneath what kind of shopping. If you have other stamps or even other little icon type stickers, you know, it could be clothes shopping, it could be fun shopping, whatever it is, um, you can pick. You know, because I'm using these huge stickers. Let's see, maybe if I go sideways, I can kind of do, here, I'm gonna stamp this middle one so I can press down on both sides. So you just kind of even it up and stamp. So it's not perfectly straight. I guess it doesn't matter too terribly much. Now I have a sticker. And because I wouldn't want to use this whole thing, if I was actually going to use this in my planner, I would just reach over here and grab my scissors. And I could, for instance, cut it off like this. Again, that was not a very straight or perfect job. This is purely for demonstration. But now I have a really small sticker and I could put this anywhere in my planner to signify that I am shopping. And I could put it next to a time slot. I could you know, write a note beside it. I could have cut down a little further and left a blank so I could jot some note in the sticker as well. And that's essentially it. I just use my Crayola water colors um, that I pilfered from the kids' homeschool stash. I just have been practicing and messing around on the different labels to actually see how the watercolor marks out. And especially with these ones, you saw how quickly those dried. It didn't take very long. So it's very simple to maybe paint an entire sheet. And by the time you get to the bottom, you can be ready to stamp the top ones. Um, and there are so many different sizes of these. So it's really perfect for any of your planner needs. You could handwrite entire things in here. You can cut it up like I did. Um, 
I, again, the possibilities really are endless. And if I can just pick up the edge, they're supposed to be removable. So if you're unable to get to shopping one day and you need to move it to the next day, which boy, has that happened for me before with three young kids, then uh, you can move it and you're not crossing things off if that's not your desire. Um, you could leave them in your planner. Um, I will probably make many and not move them unless I have to. Like for instance, if Monday I can't go shopping but I can Tuesday, I will move it from Monday to Tuesday. But I probably won't use that same shopping sticker two weeks from now, the next time I go grocery shopping. I will probably put a new sticker. So I'll have one every two weeks, if that makes sense, because they are also decorative. Um, but again, that's what I love, that they can be removable if I so need to have something removable, but they're also pretty and I can leave them and use them as a consumable product. Now you may have noticed um, I smudged it a little bit. I didn't give my ink a good chance to dry before I started picking it up and playing with it. So you'll want to leave your stickers, um, but these ones, you know, I did last week and I can pick them up and, and they are not smearing at all. So just keep that in mind. So that's really it. That's a simple little project. Um, I went ahead and, and I painted these last week, but I didn't have time to stamp them. I also wasn't sure if I was going to make, you know, shopping purple and, you know, play dates green, or if I wanted to be able to do a column of here's purple shoppings, but here's purple play dates, because perhaps I would want to use all purple in one layout, um, or perhaps I would want my different items uh, color coded. So endless, endless options. And as you can tell by this video, I could ramble on about the um, variety and versatility of these, but I will stop and cut this off. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me just pull my planner up one last time uh, so you can kind of see again. So here is just the stamps directly onto my pages in my planner. And then here I started using some of my stickers and stamps. And I've been really happy with them and I'm excited to decorate next week's layout um, and have a little bit more of a thought out plan instead of a, well, these are the ones I practice on. I wanted to see how they looked. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another video. I'm a wife and mother at awifeandmother.blogspot.com. See you around, guys.